Lorenzo Di Bocca, uh, who's going to be talking about a new grammar for experiences, uh, which is uh, Nishika Beyond Distuchan. Uh, so, kind of uh, maybe history or not, we don't know, we can see. We talk about uh, a new way to read it.
idr. Okay. So, what, uh, in such a way, he's trying to step into ordinary language, right? He's saying, like, what we call experience, or we, what we call to make an experience, or to have an experience, is this and this and the other. But it's not uh, really like the definition he's setting, he's more kind of trying to catch something which is circulating in ordinary language, and then he's trying to reframe afterwards. So, you have in the second part of the text, it's by pure, I refer, so it's kind of uh, changing like the ordinary concept of experience and trying to refine it a little bit. So I was interested on this uh, work of refining like kind of ordinary concepts and you actually see it on this like little expressions that taken to do. Do you know what? So what do we call to experience, right? Is this and the other. So it's, it's not really like we are saying definitions, it's more like uh, we are circulating in ordinary language. So um, I was also shocked by the fact that he's using like many different terms. So he refers to, well, you know, in the English translation, it's a little bit uh, sorted out because the translator says to experience, right? But to experience a little bit like uh, minimalist translation because uh, generally in English you have to like to make an experience or to have an experience. But you see, like here, it was a little bit problematic for the translator to choose uh, between <coughs> them both because afterwards Nishida is going to say that there is no dichotomy between object and subject, so it might be a little bit difficult to talk about, you know, the fact that to have an experience or to make an experience. So he's sorting that out by using something which is not that common in English because to experience something is a little bit sophisticated. So I, I was really trying to deal with all uh, uh, this little uh, details on the text. So I was also surprised by the fact that uh, he's using Shishitsu, right? So what we can actually uh, have main translations, but uh, we can mainly talk about a fact, a truth, or a reality. So in the text, uh, he's talking about facts, actually. But that's also a little bit problematic, because uh, if you're talking, well, he's talking about the concept of experience, of course, ordinary concept of experience, but uh, if you actually want to work with this ordinary concept of experience and you want to make it thinner, uh, it's obvious that if it is a pure experience and it's been uh, purified by all concepts, it's difficult to talk about facts. Yeah? Is it okay to ask questions in between? Yeah, of course. Um, because you started to say that he's using ordinary language. Yeah. Um, what about Kaken? I mean, how ordinary is this word and other terms that come up? Do you think it's already a kind of phenomenological language? Or is it, as you seem to suppose, like everyday language? But as a starting I, point? Yeah, as far as I know, it's like to Kaken, in Japanese, it's something as common as to have an experience, or maybe it's a little bit like more technicalized, but uh, it's something you can use in ordinary language, right? It's not something uh, you should find in all books, so you can use it in ordinary language, right? At least I think you should uh, keep in mind that this is like a major period, or I mean, 1911 yeah. is just the turning point, but um, major period was still a time which a lot of words were introduced into Japanese, so rather top down than from yeah. bottom up, so made up terms to yeah. translate by some terms. I don't know in each case, but if you're stepping into this discussion saying we start with ordinary language and this becomes refined into a kind of philosophical discourse, um, it might be worth to look at each word in itself if there is this kind of ordinariness already given, or does, has it become an ordinary term until nowadays, whereas it was a major period, maybe a new term. But, yeah. yeah, that's a, a very good point that you're saying, because it's difficult to actually see which was like kind of ordinary on the thing that Nishida was writing, because also, okay, I'm skipping my point, but that's what you answer to your question. Um, and th that was something I want to, you know, like there are some expressions which used to have countries as well in that period, like uh, from Normani, uh, and things, you know, there are kind of a lot of countries which have been like lexicalized, 
you know, so that at that period we wrote in Kanji's and today we just write in write Hiragana. So in this, you know, like uh, for me, I don't know, like, Tsuno Mamani, Tsuno Mamani, Oite, that's like, no, 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 for me, it's like ordinary expression, just leave something as it is. But once you get to the original, well, the original text is not exactly uh, the text that uh, you get in this, uh, like the most common um, version of uh, Tenno Genki. This one, it's already been purified. You know, all this country has been purified. So, because I'm not a specialist, you know, of uh, evolution of uh, Japanese language between the Meiji and <laughs> you know, like the fifties or whatever this edition is. Uh, I can't uh, really tell yet, but uh, well, that's remarks that don't yeah, want, don't want to but remarkable. But that's very yeah. interesting. But we can also think that some of the terms we used to be technical terms become uh, became like uh, lexicalized or like it's the same idea for metaphors, right? So there was kind of a uh, lexicalization process and in this way some of the terms really lost some of the technicity yeah, uh, they used to have. Yeah, that's a very good point. But actually what we call ordinary language, it uh, changes all the time, so it's uh, very difficult to speak about ordinary language. So of course when I talk about ordinary language I'm referring to uh, or like uh, ordinary language now. In Japan. In Japan. And yeah, that's a good point, and I think that would be good to do some kind of uh, inquiry in a kind of uh, maybe historical approach about this good trade, of course, between technical and ordinary language. So, yeah, uh, so I just, sorry, I was, um, okay. So uh, there were many uh, different terms which uh, um, Nishida uses to refer to objects or to the state of things. So we have shijitsu, uh, something we can translate by the fact, truth, uh, reality. Uh, we also have, uh, at the very end, when we, the, he's talking about external objects, uh, this is kind of um, weird expression, actually, in English. But uh, in Japanese, we have this gaijutsu. Uh, so uh, this term also is uh, kind of, well, I don't know if you see that, like the country for Daibutsu, like uh, Dai Soto, eh? Soto, Soto no Mono. So, uh, Daibutsu, like external things, but uh, the point that I want to make is uh, that this expression uh, actually uh, allows Nishida uh, not to express which is the uh, degree of determinativity that things should have to be the object of our experience. I don't know if I make myself clear. Uh, we have this uh, conference uh, given by um, Professor, I think it's Tani Doru, uh, recently, and he was speaking exactly about this, you know, like the degree of uh, uh, resoluteness or the degree of determinacy something has uh, to have in order to be the object of an experience. And by choosing this very neutral expression, right, like uh, Gai Butsu, it's like uh, Nishida is kind of avoiding, you know, <laughs> the fact of entering into the question of which is the degree of determination we need in order to have an experience. So, um, just to confront like two different translations, which was like the second point of uh, my talk, I will say, uh, uh, you know, Abbas is translated here, this is like the second part of the text, the moment of seeing a color, so we are defining pure experience, right? The moment of seeing a color or hearing a sound, for example, is prior not only to the thought that the color or sound is, the activity of an external object or the one is sensing it, but also to the judgment of what the color or sound might be. So in this case, we are actually in completely uh, indeterminacy. Uh, you know what I mean? This, uh, we have like two uh, possible readings of the text. In one we say, like, it's the moment of having an experience before you even 
even know what it is about, you know, so before you even uh, kind of manage the concept of color or you even manage the concept of sound. So that's the moment of pure experience, if I can call it so. And on the other side, we can say, and this was like Viviano's translation, and was the little point we had when I made the proposition. Viviano's translation is a little bit different because it says, it's the moment, that moment of seeing a color or hearing a sound, which occurs not only before one has added the judgment that this seeing or hearing relates to something external. Okay, that's clear enough because there is no partition between subject and object. So uh, this concept of something external has uh, no place here. But even before one has judged it, what color or what sound it is. You know, so in this second case, I am thinking of a certain determinacy of things in which I do know what a color is, I do know what a sound is, but I haven't qualified them uh, yet uh, as being one particular sound or one particular color. So I think that actually uh, the uh, Japanese text uh, spans both translations. And my idea is just because, yeah, if you read the, uh, so the bar which is, so, kono ido, kono oto wa nan de ari to you. So, what is this sound? Actually, it really depends on the context. You know, if I'm in a context like everyday life, I can say, what is this sound? <laughs> it doesn't mean I don't know that that thing is a sound. It just means that I don't know, maybe I don't know which object is uh, producing it, where it, you know which direction is coming from, or is a kind of sound I've never been confronted to. And same thing for colors. What what kind of color is that? You know, so it's a colorido anandesca. Of course, you need like a very special uh, contextual features to ask those kind of questions. But if I want to, you know, paint my room, so I want to have the same color you have, I can say like. And of course, I'm referring to the fact that uh, regarding a color guy, what is the name of the color, or what is the number I should ask at the page in shop, or whatever. So what I mean is that it's not that, that easy to sort in uh, this sense which is the degree of uh, determination something has to have in order to be the object of an experience. Well, there were many other points in the, let's say, subject. Uh, side, uh, we have this chico no saiku, yeah, one's own uh, fabrications, which actually I learned uh, yesterday. We had uh, normally like a negative connotation, so it's uh, the moment of pure experience, an experience uh, which has, uh, in which uh, we are getting rid. Because actually, it's not a relinquishing. Relinquishing is a little bit posh for the level of the Japanese text. If you see the Japanese text, is sutero uh, actually. So the the verb is to actually like uh, like gum, like uh, uh, garbage. And you get rid of something. While in this uh, relinquishing, you have the idea of something you are getting rid of, but you don't really want to maybe. So it's like the idea of, uh, uh, I don't have the exactly word in English, but uh, mm, uh, to, to give up something, to give up something. So I think there also it is a little bit like, maybe not over translate, but uh, translate it, but a uh, little bit too high level. So by pure experience, we understand uh, any moment in, in which things appear in a certain way and uh, in which we get rid of the uh, thing, like we get rid of uh, our own uh, fabrications or our own uh, even speculations, lucubrations, you know what I'm and also, I, I wanted to make a point on the whole vocabulary, which is uh, uh, used to express like the link between the two of them. Well, you have taken, taken through, like to make an experience, but uh, you have also this idea of magie, yeah? like to uh, mix something. 
So by pure experience, I refer to an experience which hasn't been mixed with any kind of judgment. But mixed doesn't mean in this text, or in this context, uh, I think, adulterated. So adulterated is more something you've uh, mixed with, and its nature changed. Well, here, we're, we're just saying that here, something which has, hasn't been mixed with something different. Yeah. Um, we also have in this line, Kuwaito, uh, yes, so it, a judgment which hasn't been added, yeah, because it is the moment of experience in which a judgment hasn't uh, been added yet. Um, <coughs> but there are many other problematic text uh, terms. So I guess like the whole point is uh, so actually we we'll point we need the characterization of something in order uh, to let it be in a logical level an experience and uh, to kind of try to sort this question out. I. Uh, brought you tractatus, so maybe someone wants to read the following uh, paragraph. Mm -hmm. This is 5552 from tractatus. Mm -hmm. My German is quite hard. Yeah? Die Erfahrung, die wir zu verstehen der Logik brauchen, ist nicht die, dass sich etwas so und so verhält, sondern dass etwas ist. Aber das ist eben keine Erfahrung. Die Logik ist vor jeder Erfahrung, dass so etwas so ist. Sie ist vor dem Wie, nicht vor dem Was. Okay. Thank you. So, well, I, I should like replace this uh, proposition in the context of the whole tractation, which will change ages, but just. Uh, Take it as a rule, right? As a grammatical rule. So here yeah, I've taken the English translation. The experience, then yeah, we can translate this one. The experience which we need to understand logic is not that such and such, hmm? so and so, such and such is the case, but that something is. Yeah, because actually Nishida is taking us to the point in which we cannot say anything about this thing because otherwise it won't be a pure experience. So you actually have uh, to stay in the point in which you say something is, or you experience something which stands there. Not that something is like this or like this. So before the act of characteriz characterization. But, as uh, that I pointed out. That, that is not experience. Otherwise, if I take all the determination, all phenomenological determination uh, from anything and even up to some kind of uh, logical determination, particularity, I don't get the object of an experience. So the object of an experience has to be, uh, uh, has to have a certain kind of feature, otherwise it is not an experience at all. But that is not experience, uh, that's what he's trying to say. So logic, that's the only possible, uh, let's say, uh, approach we can have in this situation. Logic precedes every experience that something is so. It is before the how, not before the what. So in such a way, we can think, actually, uh, if we're reading Nishida from a Wittgensteinian standpoint, we can say what Nishida is proposing here is not a phenomenology, but rather a logic, because we are unable to say anything about the object uh, of this pure experience. So in order to, uh, what, like, we can actually I'm repeating myself, but we would like to say uh, the logical uh, condition for something to be the object of an experience is that it has at least one phenomenological or logical feature. Otherwise, we are not talking about experience, or it's not 
the ordinary concept of experience of when we have uh, uh, this quotation was the the affair, yes. So the experience which we need to understand logic is actually not a real experience. So I just wanted to conclude maybe by this uh, last uh, quotation, which is uh, from the um, philosophical investigation. Sorry, it might be some typing problems. Um, German, so if so, just please correct me. Uh, is there anybody willing to? Okay. Die Philosophie darf den tatsächlichen Gebrauch der Sprache in keiner Weise anpassen. Sie kann ihn am Ende also nur beschreiben, denn sie kann ihn auch nicht begründen. Sie lässt alles, wie es ist. Uh, in this text, 
ミシダそれは色を見ね音を聞く切なそうでインスタンス in which we see a color in which we listen to a sound and if you look at the word it's a little bit、um, technicalized right it's set to not I think today it's a little bit fa- unfashionable word in ordinary Japanese so why is Nishida and I'm responding I'm directly to your question why is Nishida using this term of、uh, set to not instant or not、uh, talking or like、uh, この音を大きくの時、which will be like the more、uh, most natural way to make it come in Japanese, I think it's also because he's irritating this、uh, William James grammar of Ishiki no Yagare, so stream of consciousness. So I think、uh, this part of the text, for instance, is、um, completely in solidarity with uh, uh, this concept of stream of consciousness. While for Wittgenstein it would be completely different because he、uh, well like later after、uh, what we call brown book、uh, Steve brown book、uh, blue book is not so, so clear, but、uh, from philosophical investigation it's very clear that we don't have any metaphysics, no metaphysics of time. So even if like what we call the first bit, well after first, let's say between tractatus and philosophical investigation. This、uh, Wittgenstein, to call it this way, is, it has a lot of influence from William James as well. So he will really kind of、uh, add there, or、uh, he will be attached to this metaphysics of time, which will be kind of the、uh, basis of、uh, experience as it is understood. But if we take later、uh, Wittgensteinian writings, so from philosophical investigation, but also until all certainty, you will see that.、Uh, This concept of experience, which is not very technicalizing, Wittgenstein was thought, is completely、uh, unaware of any metaphysics at all of time. So that will be another、uh, point,、uh, like disruptive point between the two of them. While for Wittgenstein,、uh, experience is to be understood、um, within a grammatical framework, strictly grammatical framework. Uh, Nishida gets sticks,、uh, gets sticks. Sorry, to kind of a metaphysical project still. Even if he says, okay, there are some problems with this issue. No, 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 no. We have、uh, problems, and we need to refine it in the way William James has thought of this concept. Is、uh, is not、uh, clear enough, or he's always thinking、uh, his system in the backgrounds of.、Uh, This、uh, psychological realism, and I think that's one of、uh, the things he actually regretted at、uh, the end. He said, like his very first、uh, writings are kind of very、uh, psychologist、uh, aim, right?、Uh, something that also will change in later、uh, later writings in English as well. So、I think we cannot answer to that question unless we、uh, say, okay, we are talking. Which victims are we talking about? With Nishida,、uh, are we talking about which text it really changes from one to the other? But I think that Nishida will keep until the end this intuition that、uh, okay, we are this is metaphysics. While for Wittgenstein, we metaphysics is just a language game, right? So that will be very、uh, important. Questions?、Uh, I have maybe something to ask, and you, you might like my comment because maybe I have a misinterpretation or、uh, lack of knowledge about what's going on. But、uh, correct me, sorry if I'm wrong.、Um, Can you speak a little bit louder? Yes. So、uh, my question is to.、Uh, Like to me, like I think it's related to the beauty theory with、uh, Wittgenstein and how like language and world are related together. Because、uh, you say that basically philosophy、um, actions should leave the world as it is,、uh, you know. But then, to what extent this should、uh, philosophy? Yeah, yeah that philosophy. is C yeah. in the text. Yes. And it's L. And <laughs> yeah, but then, what, to what extent this should is actually a reasonable way of thinking? Because、uh, to what extent, basically, when I'm 
talking about things, I definitely change the frame of the, those things. Yes. When I don't know, in, inside the let's say cultural uh, society that I am in, so the reality of the world change in a certain point, or, or at least the way I'm seeing it. So to what extent this should uh, leave things as they are is actually reasonable. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. I think should is uh, really uh, is a norm, right? It's a, it's a normative, like in the way we want to do philosophy. That's the main, exactly the way in which we do philosophy, which is actually what Wittgenstein is against too. But of course, it's uh, I think this we should, and we also have this um, restrictive clause that new. Uh, Sorry for my uh, German. This time, yeah. Uh, also, Neuer, it can only, the only thing uh, philosophy can do is to describe our language games, if you want to go further, our forms of life. But uh, philosophy is a it's descriptive activity. That's the new goal, that's <laughs> the, the aim. So I think maybe your idea is, but okay, why describing it? We are changing something, something like that? Yeah, or, yeah okay. <laughs> but uh, like if I want to translate what Wittgenstein says here is philosophy is kind of lehre. Philosophy is not a doctrine, right? Philosophy is not a set of propositions. Philosophy is the activity of describing what's already there. So it's just in this uh, sense that I told the analogy. But of course, we can say, okay, okay, of course, something changes. And what changes is that this is like the, the therapist uh, side of Wittgenstein philosophy. We, um, we don't suffer anymore from metaphysical problems, right? Once, because the thing is not to uh, sort out problems, but rather to show that they are not metaphysical problems. So once you get into the way in which there is no metaphysical problems, what you are doing is just uh, to uh, uh, and make uh, make unreal this metaphysical problem. So of course uh, we are doing something because most of philosophical questions are not real questions. So what we do when we do philosophy is to try to understand which are the real questions. Uh, which. But if it is a question, it has uh, an answer. And if it has an answer, you will have normally an answer from common sense or, or yeah, language games or from a practice, but not from philosophy. So philosophy is not in theory, but of course philosophy changes. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the, the way in which we make love is also, so, yeah. okay. Thank you. Yes. Just a remark, I what I found uh, interesting is that um, Wittgenstein, this quotation, first one, yes. is talking a lot of like, experience. Uh, um, first of all, here is uh, the quotation part. So the concept of the experience that we need to understand the logic. Yeah. But what kind of experience of the logic we can have? We uh, need to understand the logic Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Mm. in fact, that if you state here that uh, logic is, yeah, we, we can't experience the logic, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, I yeah, I'm not very sure, but right. I think this logic with the L is uh, not the same logic as uh, the the other one. Uh, the other one, the third line, sorry. So one is the uh, the logic, uh, the logic of experience, if, <laughs> if I'm really saying. And the other one is we are defining what logic is inside the tractate. So uh, with all the additional concepts like uh, logic of uh, uh, logic of space, sorry, and all the concepts which go. Really? Uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but it's the same. I mean, uh, he didn't change the concept of logic. I mean, basically, it's at the end of Tractatus, it's, it's just going to discuss, you know, 
what I'm what I'm saying here is Zinn uh, the because uh, because we, we cannot speak about the lo logic. I mean, in the in the framework of the tractatus, because the philosophy shows there's other. Yeah, we are not speaking about. We are showing what logic is. So we, we show things. We do things in this logical space, right? Yeah, I understand. But just that uh, here, like. Um, uh, uh, Nishida was talking about the, in fact, the experience of, uh, like a pure experience without, uh, b before logic, like a pre predicative. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And here he's talking about the possible experience of logic. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, that's what I, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, that's the, exactly the point. But all I wanted to say is, like, I, I think. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. That you think that logic in the first line and logic in the third line refer to the same thing, while they're not. Logic in the first line is our ordinary concept of logic. So the experience which we need to understand logic okay, is not that such and such is the case. And uh, the second <laughs> occurrence of uh, logic is a definition of what. Uh, if we think uh, the tractatus is a theory, which could be plausible, mm -hmm. what, uh, we, or at least we are characterizing what logic is. So logic is something which is uh, prior uh, to every experience, to mm -hmm. the experience. That something is so and so. You understand? Like logic in the first line is yeah, an ordinary it? language concept of logic. So it's like the dynamics, yeah? The experience. Uh, dynamics we need to understand it's not that such and such is it I don't think I agree but okay but <laughs> okay <laughs> we can okay we can have a conversation I mean yeah, but we want to say the same thing but, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we don't agree but we agree <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you very much for answering